Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm making homemade maple bars. These classic donuts are light and fluffy, and with the sweet maple glaze, they're going to melt in your mouth. My friend Julia is coming over today and maple bars are her favorite. So I thought I'd surprise her by making some from scratch. I just don't want the surprise to be on me if I don't get them done in time. So I'm just gonna quickly go over what you're going to need. And I'll also include all the ingredients and measurements in the description box beneath this video. But we're going to start with half a cup of warm water, three fourths of a cup of warm milk, two teaspoons dry active yeast. And just so you know, it's one of these little packets. Half a cup plus one tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon salt, five eggs, half a cup of unsalted butter, and I've cut mine into little pieces, and five and a half cups all-purpose flour. And then for the glaze, you're going to need one fourth of a cup of unsalted butter, half a cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons milk. The recipe calls for one tablespoon corn syrup, but I'm gonna be using maple syrup so that they're extra mapley. You'll need two teaspoons of maple extract and two cups of powdered sugar. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my yeast in a small bowl and to it I'm going to add the warm water, the warm milk, and I'm going to take a tablespoon of the sugar and add it in as well. This will give the yeast something to work on. Just mix, preferably with a whisk, and let it sit for about 10 minutes to activate and become frothy. Meantime, in the bowl of my stand mixer, I'm going to combine the dry ingredients. That's the flour, the salt, and the rest of the sugar. I'll place the bowl on the stand and insert the hook attachment. Then I'll add in the yeast mixture that's now activated along with the five eggs. I'll set the mixer to medium speed and let everything get fully combined. This should only take a few minutes. Next, I'll add in the butter that is pre-cut into smaller pieces. This will help it get incorporated more easily and I'll let the mixer continue to do the work for me and get everything mixed together until I'm left with a smooth dough that no longer sticks to the sides of the bowl. I'll quickly take the dough out of the bowl just long enough for me to lightly grease it with a little olive oil. And I'll put the dough back in, cover it with a kitchen towel and I'll place it in a warm area of my home and let it rise for about an hour. After one hour, this dough has doubled in size. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna punch it down, reshape it, and then let it rise a second time. And that's what's gonna make these donuts so light and fluffy. So anytime you see a recipe that calls for two rises, that's what they're going for. After the dough has doubled in size a second time, dust a clean flat surface with flour, place your dough onto the flour and roll it out with the rolling pin. The goal is to get it in the shape of a large rectangle that's about three fourths of an inch thick. Just
just do the best you can. Mine is definitely not perfect. Then take a knife or pizza cutter and cut it down the middle lengthwise. Then across so that you can create 12 donut bars. Place those bars onto a floured baking sheet and let them rise an additional 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, begin heating your oil in a large pot on the stovetop. I'm using canola, but peanut oil is ideal. You want an oil with a high heat point, and you need enough so that it's at least a couple of inches deep. As soon as the temperature of the oil reaches 360 degrees, carefully drop each bar of dough and let it fry on each side until golden in color. Place them onto a cooling rack lined with paper towels to absorb the excess oil and let them cool. Once all your donuts are fried and cooled, we can make the glaze. For this, I'm melting the butter in a skillet that's wide enough to fit the maple bars in, but you can use a regular saucepan and then just transfer the glaze later. As the butter is melting, add in the brown sugar, the milk, and the two teaspoons of maple syrup. Again, this recipe calls for corn syrup, but I'm experimenting. Then add in the two cups of powdered sugar and mix until it all comes together. As soon as it comes to a low simmer, take it off the heat and stir in the two teaspoons of maple extract. Mix until you have a smooth glaze. Then pour it into another dish or dip the maple bars directly into the pan if they fit. Only the top side needs maple glaze. Then let them sit on a rack to set. Well, these maple bars are all done. And I will say that you may need to make a little extra maple glaze because I sort of ran out. There's a few of them back there that didn't get to get frosted, but those that did look pretty good. Admittedly, not the prettiest maple bars I've ever seen, but I know they're going to taste delicious. And, uh, made them just in time because Julia just got here and we've got our coffee all made and we're just gonna go sit outside and enjoy them. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, blessings from my home to yours.